What's up guys? So recently I had a pretty cool conversation with a few of my friends and I started jotting some notes down on our on our talk and I wanted to share them with you guys today. Um, so let's, let's start off right there. So, you know, the, in the business world uh, in the lingo, um, there's a there's a few uh, schools of thought. There's a credit cycle and then there's a business cycle. And uh, I guess the best way I could describe a business cycle, you know, business always goes up and down. You know, it's never going to be normal. And why? Uh, we're, we're human, right? Uh, our tastes change. Th things in our lives happen, you know, and things overall happen, right? The world is always kind of changing. And uh, that's when you see business go down until we bring a new product or service to the market and we'll make it go back up. Uh, you know, in school, they, I guess the, uh, I hate using that because it's it's whatever but just bear with me it's called the product life cycle and i guess you could kind of trace it with that for most businesses so when you have a new product uh like the new iphone uh let's say the iphone one the very first one that came out you know you got their first first movers or the first people that buy it and it gets all the you know the next stage and the early adapters is what they call them and then you have like all the way down to like the late bloomers or like the really late to tech when the iphone 6 was out they're still buying the one or whatever you know so as you can see this thing goes all the way down at the end of it here we now have like iPhones 11s, right? So no one's really going to want the one. So that that business kind of cycles dead because that you know that uh, that product's dead. But they also have new products they're launching. So in a business cycle, you kind of think of that a as a whole all over, right? You have so many people being born, so many people dying, so many things going on in the world. It's all connected, but it's all crazy, right? And that usually happens every like five years. And you'll have a little slowdown or a little slump, and then we'll get back to normal. Then you have the credit cycle and the credit cycle in a way it does go hand in hand with the business cycle because we look at what the overall economy is doing as a whole and we give credit uh through the federal reserve and if you didn't know this the federal reserve is not nothing to do with a uh, uh the government they're a private bank that got the power to uh print money and help monitor and control money and it's supposed to be independent but in the last like i would say 20 to 15 years have been politicized so that means that whoever's in office, uh, whether it be left or right, is going to want to make sure that money's coming to you and we're doing everything we can to prop up the economy rather than letting actual capitalism prevail, which, hey, that's a topic for another day. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad yet. I mean, I guess we're still uh, testing this theory out. But anyway, so they determine, you know, where the credit should be uh, for people to be able to borrow and do stuff. So. You know, right now, I guess technically we are in a recession. We're gonna have, we're we're gonna end up having two quarters of slow GDP. That's the technical term of a recession. And GDP means gross domestic product. That means at the end of the year we add up all the crap, or every three months we add up all the crap that we made, all the services that we made, and uh, we come up with this number and say, okay, this is how much products and services this country produced. Right? Uh, it's a way to look at how healthy I guess the economy is comparing it to. Uh, last year or last quarter or where we're we going right so you know my my biggest thing was and this conversation was funny it was a twisted kind of way to say it but it's the best way I could describe it we in America have gotten addicted to cheap credit and we think it's going to continue to be the fix for everything we have student debts that's racked up like crazy uh, sometimes no th no fault through their own we're trying to do the right thing uh, but the problem here is is the way I see it it's um, it's kind of like heroin, you know, and it's crazy, uh, because it's kind of like, you know, I know from this drug, from studying it and, you know, in my background, in my, my profession, um, you know, when you're on it, you know, everything's great and you want to just, you're addicted to it. Your body needs it. You crave it. And that's kind of where I feel like our nation is right now is we need this credit. We crave it. We want this injection. Like wall street is just waiting and they're saying, Hey, you're going to come bail us out when this pops up or that pops up. And if it doesn't, if the one day that comes that we can't prop it up and, and it won't, you know, Federal Reserve won't come and we won't print to save the day, that's going to be the most one of the most bloodiest days in, in, in the Wall Street, pretty much, you know. But the road to recovery would be as we start winding off of this. Uh, the same way as you would stop somebody from, you know, taking heroin. If you take it away from them all at once, you know, their body's going to go into shock. They're going to have everything in the world happen to them worst, worstly as possible. And the same thing would happen to our country. We get off the credit right away and say, no, we're not bailing anyone out anymore. We're done. You're going to see it's going to turn into a disaster. And uh, the best way to do it is to wean off of it and build a plan. And, you know, like if you were taking, I don't know, like five shots a day, it goes down to four, then, you know, three, two. I'm trying to give you like a perspective to think about it. Think about the country as like a human, like an actual human being. Um, but eventually we could get to the stage 
where, you know, we're no longer dependent on the drug, which is, you know, credit. <clears throat> and then we were able to, you know, live a normal, healthy life. Just like heroin, if you keep taking it, you could take it for quite a while, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. Eventually it's going to kill you. And I believe that this credit and this constant palling and constant debt burden that we have is doing that to us. We're injecting this heroin into us every single time we're having to go to, you know, get a bailout. Now, for the most part, we were pretty good about it. I mean, no one's, I mean, you can't really blame anybody for the coronavirus in the sense. I mean, I know I can blame China for not doing the best they can, but I meant like, you know, overall, a pandemic's going to happen. If it wasn't China, it was going to be Mexico. It was going to be us. It was going to be somebody else. We're just too vast, too many connecting parts. So the bailouts, they had to be necessary right now. Otherwise, there'd be complete chaos. I get that. But my problem goes beyond that is when businesses themselves, uh, not just the government, businesses themselves rely on this cheap credit. And they keep taking it in and taking it in just to buy back their stocks or to make horrible business decisions. But eventually it's going to have to catch up with everybody. And it is going to be a painful recovery. And, you know, when we talked about it and I gave that analogy, they're like, yeah, man, that's a pretty good, you know, analogy in it. So uh, that that's the best way I could describe what's going on right now is we're, we would, we should be able to get through this. But I feel like the smallest tear is just going to come tearing, tearing down. I feel that, you know, we talked about the Schiller PE is still extremely high. And these are very trying times. And for Things still be blowing up out the roof when the world is falling. You know, I, I really don't know what else to say more about that. And um, really interesting, uh, I'll finish with this. I don't want to take too much of your time here, but uh, I watched the uh, Ray Dalio uh, uh, interview recently, and I love Ray Dalio. I, I've read, you know, both of his books uh, that came out, uh, uh, you know, but he's, if you don't know who he is, he's a genius, has one of the most influential uh, companies, uh, capital management companies in the world. Uh, but he thinks that there's the business cycle, there's a credit cycle, and he thinks there's a currency cycle. And he believes that we're at the peak of the currency cycle. Okay, so what the hell does all that mean? He believes that America might lose its standing in the world as the world's reserve currency. And basically, that is going to be a whole other uh, topic of a discussion that I, I could post a video about, uh, hopefully sometime this week. But if that were to happen, then you could throw everything out the roof. Forget about the credit cycle and the business cycle. We're going to have, you know, huge problems going all the way up to geopolitical power. Because essentially, if we lose the reserve currency of the world, that means no one needs dollars anymore to do major transactions across the world to get the things they need. Another superpower is going to fill that. Or another technology might. This is where Bitcoin might come in. But most likely, it'll probably be another superpower. And if we lose that, I think we lose a lot more than just money. So it, it was just really interesting. And uh, I think the next video I'll make, that's what I'll talk about. I'll talk about, you know, why is the dollar important? Maybe I'll talk a little bit about the Brent Wood system and how back in the day, you know, our, our dollar used to be actually worth uh, gold. You used to be able to go to the bank, give a dollar, and they'd give you a certain amount of gold, uh, you know, for that dollar. Uh, it's no longer like that. It's just fiat currency. It's just created and it's backed by the good faith of the United States government, it allows you to pay your taxes. That's what gives our money power uh, in a sense right now. Uh, getting off topic there. But hey, I hope uh, this video is a little bit interesting to you. I hope you learned at least one or two new things, you know, from it or got you thinking a little bit about uh, where we're at right now uh, in the world and just kind of how events are playing out. Uh, Texas is about to open up, I think, if, you're not, if I'm not wrong, this Friday at 25% capacity, which who the heck knows how you're going to determine 25 like you're gonna you know count how many people go to a restaurant or bar or, or 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 a hair salon or whatever and obviously i need a haircut you know but um <clears throat> you know i think it's going to be a huge test for the country a country if they do end up going through with it so there's a lot of moving parts a lot of things going on and for me personally unless i find a really good deal uh it's a little bit too risky for me right now to go invest big uh in real estate in a sense i'm still waiting to just kind of see how things shake out uh like i said I uh, hope you learned something from this. If you have any more questions about it, uh, leave a comment or DM me. And, uh, you know, I like, to, I like to get your guys' perspective. Hey, uh, thanks for following. And if you could uh, DM this to one per, uh, person, that'd be freaking great. Um, at 400 still, it's the second video I made. And hopefully get to 500 soon.